everyone. I welcome all the viewers of Good News TV to another episode of Prayer Time. I hope this series has been a blessing to you. And in the very outset, I would like to just tell you and remind you that if you have any prayer points, you can call us on the number given on the screen. And we want to assure you that our prayer partners would be praying for you. Also, you can download download our Good News app and share your prayer requests there. We would be praying for you. So before we go into the word, let us bow our heads in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this day. Lord, even as we are in your presence to hear from you, Lord, let it not be my words, but your words that would speak into the situation that the people are going through. Today, may they hear your word into their lives. May it bless them, strengthen them and help them to have more hope and faith in you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and Amen. Last week, I shared with you about the God who answers. We saw the promises of God and then I shared about the prerequisites for answer. I would just quickly like to recap those eight points. We shared that for, for our prayers to be answered, we need to first ask. Secondly, we need to ask in the name of Jesus. Third, we said that we need to not only ask in the name of Jesus, but we need to ask in faith. The fourth point was that we need to abide in Jesus and the word of God. If we abide in him, he will, whatever we ask, he will grant to us. The fifth was, when we ask, before we ask, let us forgive others. The sixth point was, before we go into his presence, let us humble ourselves. If there is any sin or anything that is displeasing in the, in the Lord's presence, may we ask forgiveness, may we turn from it and humbling ourselves, come and bring our petitions before the Lord. The seventh point was that let us ask in, according to his will, according to the will of the Lord. And the last point that I shared was let us ask with the right intentions. Well, today I would like to talk about asking in faith. When we say the word faith, it has deep meaning, whether it is in the spiritual sense or as we talk with people around. When you say I have faith in one friend, it really means more than just believing in him. It is much deeper. Well, when I say the word faith, which is the verse or the chapter that comes into your mind from the Bible? I'm sure many of you have said Hebrews chapter 11. Of course, yes, because that is the chapter on faith. And here the author of Hebrews starts with a small definition about faith. He goes on to say, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Well, in simple words, suppose I have a need and I pray and I say, I have faith in God that he will provide my need. What does that mean? It just means that I am hoping that my need need will be met and I am confident that my God will meet my need. The second part which says that it is the assurance of what we do not see. Well, I don't see my need being, need being met yet. I don't see the result. I don't see that what I have been praying for has been granted. It's not in the physical sense in front of me. But I, my faith gives me that assurance. It is just helping me to understand, yes, I will have it. I don't see it now, but my God will provide it. That is faith. And verse 2 says, this is what the ancients were commended for. Oh, we know Abraham was commended for his faith. And if rather, if we read this chapter, we go ahead. It gives a list of people. 
list of names who were we call the heroes of faith. He starts from the very creation. He goes about Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David and uh, Deborah and on and on and on. And finally, if we see the verse 39, here he says, These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Well, didn't they receive? Of course, they received many answers, but their faith was not only on what they could see, but about that eternal life that they were looking forward to. We see that Abraham was promised to be taken to the promised land and that was Canaan, but there also he dwelt in tents because his faith was about that eternal kingdom of God. And that they did not receive on this earth. However, it goes on to say, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. So God had a plan for you and me. That is why they did not find or they did not receive that promise, completion of the promise. But in Jesus, you and me together now, we have the assurance of receiving that kingdom of God. Well, as I said, faith is a big subject. But today, I would like to share with you from the Gospel of Matthew, three instances where Jesus talks about the faith of different people. Would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 8? Here, I would like to first start with the verses 1 to 4. If we read chapter Matthew chapter 8 verses 1 to 4, it talks about the healing of a man with leprosy. And my first point is the faith of of the leper. If we read verse 2, it says, A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Here, this man is saying, Lord, if you are willing, he is just coming and over here it is said, knelt before God. The same instance is being shared in Mark chapter 1 verses 40 onwards and there we read that he came and bowed down and the word which is used over here in the original Greek it is proskenin. Proskenin means to the kind of bowing down which is usually done in the form of worship to some god. So here we understand this man had understood that Jesus is Lord. He is God and he is coming and worshipping him and he's saying Lord if you are willing. He's asking if you are willing you can make me clean. The first thing he knew Jesus as Lord and he worshipped him. Secondly before I go about that point I want to tell you that in the ancient days during this time and especially amongst the uh, Jews lepers were considered unclean. Usually there was no medicine and there was no way that they would become better. Usually they would just die of that sickness. But over here we see this leper who has no hope. Nobody would come near him. The lepers used to stay outside the camp of the Israelites. And whenever somebody approached them or they approached someone, they would cry unclean, unclean so that others would know that they are lepers. Nobody ever wanted to come near them. Nobody would ever want to touch them because if a person touched a leper, that person would become unclean. There was no hope in this leper's life. And this leper, when he heard about Jesus, he comes to him, he comes in spite of all the negatives that might have been around him, he comes to Jesus. He comes and bows down and worships him. And he says, Lord, if you are willing, you can cleanse me. What does that mean? That means he was sure that Jesus can heal. He had no doubt that Jesus can heal. Only thing he wanted to know whether Jesus was willing. 
whether Jesus was willing to come near a man like him, a leper like him, and to heal him and he uses the word cleanse him. Well, what is, how does Jesus react? Here we see, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Jesus did something that usually nobody would do. You know what, when this leper came and asked Jesus, Jesus was moved with compassion. If we read in Mark chapter 1, uh, we come to see the word that Jesus was moved with compassion. He feels compassion and pity on this man, on his condition that nobody is even wanting to associate with him. And Jesus, when he, he could have just spoken a word and healed him. He could have just said, be cleansed and he would have been cleansed. But out of that love and compassion, Jesus reaches out and touches him. It was a form of accepting him. It was a form of touching him and letting him know that Jesus cares. And here we see that Jesus touches him and says, I am willing, be clean. It is written immediately. He was cleansed of his leprosy. What a powerful experience over here. That man who came to the Lord was healed that very instant. And usually, as I said, the one who touches the leper becomes unclean. However, here the Lord touches this man with leprosy and that man is cleansed. And according to his faith, he is made whole. So this was about the faith of the leper. The second example that I want to share or the incident that I want to share is in the following verses, that is verse 5 to verse 13. It is the faith of the centurion. When we read that Jesus, when he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. The NIV writes asking for help. Another version says pleading for help. And he says, Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. He pleads the, to the Lord that, Lord, my servant, he's suffering, he's, he's paralyzed and he's in pain. And he didn't even finish his sentence. Well, before I go ahead, I want to share something about the centurion. He was a Roman person. He was not a Jew. And however, he had heard about Jesus. Also, we know that he was a good man because in those days, the Romans had the, they, they were allowed that if their servant or slave would become sick to that extent that he is of no more help to his master, the ma master had the right to even kill him. Here we see his servant is paralyzed. So instead of thinking like that, this master is coming and pleading to Jesus that Jesus would heal his servant. This shows how much compassion and what a nice man this Roman soldier was, centurion was. Secondly, the thing that I want to highlight is over here, he's coming to Jesus. That means he had heard about the miracles that Jesus did. And he, not only he heard, he believed that Jesus can heal. That is why he's coming and saying, Lord, he's coming and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home, paralyzed and suffering terribly. When Jesus sees his concern, Jesus doesn't even let him complete his sentence. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? Jesus is asking, shall I come and heal him? And immediately the centurion replies, no, no, my Lord. He says, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. Another version says, I'm not worthy that you come into my house. Actually, according to the Jewish custom, the Gen Jews were not allowed. They were not supposed to enter the house of Gentiles. They would keep a distance. And the centurion knew this very well. And he didn't want this teacher to come into his house because that was not, he was not this centurion was not worthy to let the Lord come into his house. And therefore, 
he not only believed in Jesus, he took his faith to another level. He believed that it was not necessary for Jesus to come into his house and touch his sick servant. Rather, one word from Jesus was enough to heal him. This was the faith of the centurion. He believed that just one word from such a distance, even that's why he goes on to say that Lord, because I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me, I tell them, uh, tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servants do this and he does it. So he, Jesus was surprised. The word next verse says when Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Jesus was amazed at this man's understanding of Jesus' spiritual authority. He knew Jesus was Lord and he had power. And if he spoke a word, it had to come to pass. And Jesus says that I have not found anyone with such great faith even in Israel, the chosen people of God. And he continues to say in verse 11, I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, what a wonderful word for you and me. You and me, we who were not the chosen Israelite people, we are Gentiles. But Jesus is speaking about you and me, that many will come from the east and the west who are not of that chosen clan, but still through the blood of Jesus, when we believe that yes, Jesus was born on this earth. He walked on this earth, healed people, he did various miracles and at the age of 33 and a half, he died on the cross of Calvary. He, by his stripes, he was beaten and we are healed by his stripes. He died on the cross. He was buried and on the third day, he rose up again. He came before his disciples and then he ascended into heaven. And today he is at the right hand of God Almighty. He is pleading for us. When we believe this fact, when we believe this, we become and we ask him into our life. We accept him. We become his sons and daughters. And here Jesus is saying that we will be in the kingdom of God along with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. What a beautiful word this is. So my brothers and sisters, just look forward to that entering the kingdom of God. Well, Jesus goes on to tell the centurion if you read verse 13 it is said then jesus said to the centurion go let it be done just as you believed it would let it be according to your faith and the word says and his servant was healed at that moment at that very hour, at that very moment, here Jesus says, let it be done according to thy faith and at, ho at his home, the servant is healed. This was the say, faith of the centurion, which Jesus commended. And lastly, I would like to talk about the incident where Jesus calms the storm. And we see this in Matthew chapter 8 verses 23 to verse 27. Here we see that when Jesus got onto the boat, his disciples also followed him. And in the boat, Jesus was really tired. If you see the previous verses, Jesus was walking around, healing people, delivering people, and he was ministering to others. And I'm sure Jesus was drained out. So when he got into the boat, he just fell asleep. And then suddenly, verse 24 says, suddenly a furious storm came upon the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. There was a terrible storm. And we know when it is written furious, it might have been a serious, very, very furious storm. Because had it been a normal storm, his disciples, most of them were fishermen. 
they were used to the usual storms that arose in the sea and the lake but here it was a furious storm and they tried their level best to control but they could not and water started filling into the boat and that's when they run to Jesus and it is written over here the disciples went and woke him because Jesus was sleeping and saying, Lord, save us. We are going to drown. And Jesus woke up and he replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Jesus was wondering, what happened to the faith of these people? These were the same people who saw the faith of that leper. These were the same people before whom Jesus commended the centurion saying, I have not found such faith in Israel. These were the same people who saw Jesus doing great and mighty miracles. Healing Peter's mother-in-law and many other people. He healed the demon possessed. He drove out the demons from them. Such mighty works. And these disciples, when they saw the storm, their faith is shaken and they are coming and waking Jesus and crying out, Lord, don't you see that we will perish? Don't you see? Save us from drowning. Over here, Jesus is asking, what happened to your faith? My dear brothers and sisters, are we like these disciples? We have seen God's mighty miracles in the past. But today, when we are hearing about all the sickness around, the coronavirus and the tragedies that are happening. Are we calling unto him and crying to him, Oh God, where are you? Will you not save me? Is, is he us calling you and saying, Oh you of little faith? Or is he commending you by, like he commended the centurion, that I have not found such faith in Israel? My dear brothers and sisters, we really need to think because we need to remember if Jesus is in your boat, storms will be there, problems will be there, sicknesses will come, needs will come. But remember, he will not let your boat sink. If Jesus is in your boat, whatever might happen around, he will not let your boat sink. Do we have that faith? And Jesus, we see, in verse 26, the B part, then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves and it was completely calm. It was a complete calmness, silence. And the disciples get surprised and amazed. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. The disciples who saw everything still they are amazed and are asking what kind of man is this that is the power of our lord my dear brothers and sisters i just want to encourage you in this time where you see all sickness around people are fear stricken they are panicking we hear about hospitals being overflowing in this time remember just have Jesus in your boat. If he is in your boat, you are safe. Even if the storm rages, one command from him, be still and everything is going to be still. I just want to encourage you. Trust in the Lord. Have faith in the Lord. Ask the Lord according to his will. When we say, Jesus, this is my need. If you will, Please provide it to me. He is pleased that you are giving him that place. When you trust that in spite of all problems, he can provide my need, he is glorified. Let us bow our heads and look to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this word that you have spoken to us. Lord, Please increase our faith. May we have the faith like that centurion. May we have faith that in, when Jesus is in our boat, when Jesus is beside us, even though problems come in our life, they will not overpower us. Oh God, I just 
pray that your blessing be poured into the lives of every person who is hearing. Lord, whether sickness, whether financial need, Lord, whether troubles, O oh God, whether family relationship problems, O oh God, whatever their need, O oh Master, loneliness, O oh God, depression, I just pray that they would know that you are there beside them, healing them. You are there right beside them, sharing their pain and their sorrow and providing their need. Lord Jesus, would you just bless them? Would you reach out? Bless them, guide them provide all their need. We give you the glory. We lift your name up. We exalt you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, I would like to remind you that if you have any prayer points, you can call us on the number shown on the screen. And believe me, we would our prayer warriors would be praying for you. May the good Lord bless you.